So over the past four years of our traveling and camping, I've been using this cargo carrier on the back with some plastic bins and this bag, and it's worked pretty good. It's done its job, and uh, really I have no big complaints about it, but I want to do an upgrade on it. It's something that I've been wanting to do since the beginning, is I'd like to have an actual aluminum toolbox back here on the back of the camper. So what I'm going to be doing is upgrading. We're going to remove this. We're going to move the plastic bins the uh, cargo carrier and I'm going to fabricate and build my own cargo carrier and I've got an, an aluminum toolbox that I purchased that is going to be mounted on that cargo carrier and it's going to be put back here. We're going to be moving the spare tire from this location to underneath the Kodiak. I've got a different mount that we're going to be putting there for that. We'll get this off of the back and then we're going to fabricate a nice ca cargo carrier for the back and get it mounted on. So. Come along for the ride. A couple of notes about the back of the Kodiak here. This guy right here that our cargo carrier was mounted into this is a custom receiver that I fabricated myself. Heavy duty rectangular tubing. It's got some flat bar welded to it that's bolted into the frame. We have a two inch slip tube there, you know, for a standard trailer hitch insert. Bolted onto the frame over on that side there as well. So something I fabricated because these factory bumpers that come on just about every single travel trailer like this, these are thin tubes and they're not made for holding a lot of weight. So you can bolt on accessories on this thing if you want to, but don't put a lot of weight on these things because if you have a lot of cantilever weight out here bouncing and pulling and twisting on that, it's going to end up breaking that tube, bending it and tearing it up. So I made that heavy duty one to, to battle that so we wouldn't have to worry about it. But this is an extension that I fabricated there as well. This is a Amazon special hitch that you can buy that's made to bolt onto these four inch tubes. So we bought that because that was like 20 bucks. And then I made this to come up so that we can have our bikes and things like that up above here. I don't know if I'm gonna be using that with our new cargo carrier, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna say for now, I'm probably gonna go ahead and take this extension out and I'll leave it off and then I'll figure out later if I'm still gonna be using this because I do want to have our new cargo carrier as close to the bumper as I can. That, that one right there stuck out quite a bit. So I wanna kinda keep it tucked in nice and tight, but we might have it so that it, it'll at least clear this guy right here in case I wanna put this extension back on here to be able to carry our bikes or other things on the back of the camper. I'm at the new shop. I'm set up on the welding fixture table and I've got the angle iron cut and I'm just getting it fitted now. We still got to take this back apart, grind all the corners and uh, prep it for welding. But I wanted to uh, make sure that I get my frame cut to size and measured out. And I think I got it there now. And we're going to start welding this thing together today. So here's the box that's going on the back of the Kodiak right here. This is a aluminum toolbox that I purchased made by UWS, United Welding Service. And this looks a little bit big, but it's actually the same physical size of what I already had on the back of the Kodiak. So it measures 60 inches long, five foot, and it's two foot wide by two foot high. And I really like this thing, I did a good job on it. It's got the gas struts on there to hold the lid up. Got the foam seal, help keep the moisture out of it. And look at all that room in there. I'll probably do some kind of dividers of some sort. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't even made it that far. I want to get it on the back of the Kodiak and at least be able to get it where I can set some things in there. And I'm not planning on weighing this thing down with all kinds of stuff. It's basically just for all of my barbecue utensils and uh, a few things of cookware and things like that. I'm not gonna be putting a bunch of weight. It's not gonna be cast iron in here. There's not gonna be bags of charcoal. It's just, it's just lightweight stuff that's going back here. And it, and it allows me to give, it gives me another storage box like we've already got there. And with this right here, you can lock it up. So we don't have to worry about people digging into my things. I've never had anybody steal anything off the back, but 
you just never know. But this is going to look a whole lot nicer anyway with that glossy black finish on that aluminum. It's going to be nice. All right, so back to the frame there. We're going to go ahead and start getting this guy uh, fitted and welded together. So here's the two inch tube. And this will be sitting across here just like so on the bottom side. But I'll have to get it cut to the right length. We've got to drill a hole in there for our 5 8 pin. And this is what's going to really support the whole cargo carrier right there. But I'm going to add a couple of outboard supports on this as well. I'm going to get probably like some um, inch and a quarter tubing. This is two inch. And we're going to have another piece of tubing towards the end on each end. That's also going to come across and I'm going to have probably a piece of angle iron welded to the bottom of my uh, my big receiver hitch that these pieces of tubing will probably just bolt to and that'll help uh, carry the load and provide some of that side to side rocking uh, as well. It should support it really well. So have it supported in three positions there on the cargo carrier on the I'm sorry on the hitch on the Kodiak there. All right. So. I'm gonna start getting all this broken apart. We gotta get all of our corners dressed, get rid of that mill scale, get them beveled on the bottom, and we'll start getting this thing welded together. I wanted to point out how I'm gonna be welding this together. So I want the top of the the angle iron to be flat because our box is going to be sitting down inside this frame. So I don't want weld beads on the inside right there uh, sticking up that it's going to be sitting on. I want to weld the bottom side and we're going to be welding the corner. So the way that I'm dressing my corners is that I'm putting the bevel that'll be on the bottom side. So we'll have a full penetration weld on the bottom and then the sides, uh, you know, this is cut on a 45. So we just grind that flat. So once you have the two, I don't have another piece ready, but once you have the other one sitting right here, you'll basically have a 90 degree corner that you can fill up. And then once we get it tacked together on the bottom, I get it tacked in two places all the way around. It should hold the whole frame together. And then I can stand it up and actually flat weld all of the corners there. I've got this guy ready to tack together. So we've got this one and this one here squared up to these uh, little pegs on the table. So the, this one's absolutely 90. And then I just squared up that one and this one. And according to our tape measure, we're the same distance this way on both ends, length as well. And then going across, I've got it within a 16th being square that way. So it should be good right where it's at. My plan is to get it tacked in two places. That way it'll hold together. And then I wanna make sure that the box is gonna sit down in the frame before we go ahead and uh, fully weld it up. Just want to get some tacks on it. I feel good about it being square where it needs to be. I've already double checked it and made sure that it, it is square and it's within the measurements I want. So I feel good about getting the two uh, tacks on it to hold it together so that we can test the box there. Just getting these, getting these clamps off so that we can, um, we'll set the box down in there and make sure it fits. I tried to give it a quarter inch clearance on all sides, actually a quarter inch total. So it should have about an eighth of an inch um, clearance there. So let's see. Should stick together there. Might make it easier if I just uh, maybe just set it down here on the floor and we can test it right there. How about that? All right, let's do our test fit. I'll get it. You're telling me this is not heavy, but it looks heavy. It's not that heavy. It's just aluminum. And you see this right here? Oh, that's okay. You can put your hands right there. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's not bad. No. All right. Set it around in there. Like a glove. It's like it was made for it. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like it was made you for it. You nailed it. Imagine that. And I think the clearance worked out perfect there. 
Yeah. It's not like wobbly or anything. Yeah. So I made it 24 and a quarter and then 60 and a quarter long so that it would have about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So that is going to work out good right there. This thing's pretty. I think this is going to look so much better on the back of the Kodiak versus what we had back yeah, there. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So next step, I need to get it back up on the table and I'm going to finish welding all those joints out and get it solid. And then we got to put our two inch cross tube on there. Uh, the carrier tube, get that welded on there as well. I'll have to get that cut the link. Got to drill a five eighths hole um, for the pin and then get that welded on. So you ready to get to work? No problem. Yes, nothing to it. <laughs> Are we yep. lifting this out of here? Yes, yep. Just put your corner on the wood and I'll stand it up. Oh my. Yep. You got it? I'm trying to keep the scratches off of it as long yeah. as I can so that when we actually have it installed, it looks like a brand new box. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's all right. This, the first scratch you get will definitely be made by me. <laughs> and I apologize ahead of time. All right. So now it's time for some more welding. I'm just getting the welds closer to me. That's all I'm doing. Not my best work, but it's going to hold together. Are you ready to get this project over? I am. I am ready to, to get it over. I've been thinking about this one for a while. I'm just kind of ready to see it done. Yep. So we can go camping. Yep. We can go camping. <laughs> That's good. That one turned out pretty good right there. I gotta say the um, hardtail vise, the table, been very convenient having this set up here for for this work and I'm loving the vice it's beautiful that should be it it should be welded together now well done. There's our frame. And I'll get it back up here on the table. I'll, I will have to come in here. You can see I'm going to do a little bit of dressing to these where it penetrated through to the inside and just kind of flatten those down a little bit and get them cleaned up. But next thing we got to do is get our two inch tube welded on here. I've been getting the frame cleaned up, did a little wire brushing on it, kind of get rid of some of that rust. And I've gone in here in all the corners and got these dressed down flat where we penetrated through with our weld, just using a carbide burr there. So we got all four of those done. So this guy's ready to clamp back down. And I am currently setting up the tube here. Got it cut to length, got it clean, deburred all the ends, got rid of the sharp burrs there. So we got to get our hole drilled in that. We're going to get our hole drilled in the tube here, verifying. 
I had this measured at three and a half inches from the end of the tube. Start with a three eighths drill to get a pilot hole down through it. Then we'll step it up to our uh, finished drill size. So I'm gonna drill this hole 21 30 seconds. That's a clearance hole for your pin. I, I learned a while back that if you uh, drill it too close to 5 eighths, you have a difficult time <laughs> getting the pin through there, especially when you've got weight kind of hanging out the end of it there. And we're just using some anchor lube for the, uh, lubricate the drill for our drilling here. Easy enough. I'll do some deburring on those holes there to remove all the sharp, the sharp edges. We got our two inch tube clamped down lightly where we need to. I'm gonna do one more double check here and make sure that it's where it needs to be. 29 and a quarter to the edge. 29 and a quarter. 29 and a quarter, so we should be good to go. It's the third time I've checked this. 29 and a quarter, should be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and get this, get it welded on. Those look good. I am gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put another fillet weld on that, which would be the, the top side. I gotta say that one thing I have absolutely loved so far about the fireball table is this is the first welding fixture table I've ever had. And being able to put a clamp anywhere on the table that you want to hold something down is, is truly amazing to be able to have that capability there. All right, that should be it. I need to hit the top of these welds just a little bit, just because they're sticking up slightly above the, uh, the angle iron, but this thing's ready for a test fit. It's coming together just the way I wanted it to. I wanted to try to make it as light as possible, but have the strength. So I think the one eighth angle and tubing is gonna be good. And don't forget we've got I'm going to find, I'm probably going to go over to welding shop and see if they got some drops of uh, maybe, maybe inch and a quarter square tubing. And then we're going to have a couple more uh, tubes that are be welded somewhere along this area here. That's going to extend underneath the hitch there as well. And I think where these tubes come out, I'll have some angle iron like this that's welded to the bottom of the hitch. And we're just going to have a, a hole or two in there to where I can, once this is in there, it should line up with the angle iron and I'm just gonna bolt those together. I want it to be, I want it to be bolted rigid. I don't want it flexing and moving whatever it's mounted on the back of the camper. I'm gonna drill four holes around this frame here that's gonna allow us to bolt the uh, box down. So I've already got my two foot from the center marked this way and we're gonna go 9 16 from the inside edge. That'll put it about in the middle of the angle iron. These aren't anything super critical. 
I think once we get these drilled, I use a mag drill to drill these, and then we'll probably just lay this over on top of the box and just go through those, those holes with a hand drill and just drill the aluminum. All right, just using the center to find the punch mark there. And we're gonna use an 11 30 seconds drill bit to drill the hole. That's a clearance hole for a 5 16 bolt. Put a dab of anchor lube right there. Help if you open it up so you can get a little out. I put my, my earplugs in. Those motors are loud. We've got the toolbox flipped upside down. I've got it sitting on some pig mat so it doesn't scratch anything. I'm just gonna go through these four holes with a hand drill, uh, just, just hand drill all four of those holes. Just use the same stubby drill we were using, 11 32nd. We should be able to just line it up like this. Easy enough, that aluminum's pretty simple. Easy enough, right there. All right, so we're getting much closer now. From here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the welding shop and uh, see if I can find some, some tubing for our outboard supports that we're gonna be welding on there. I hope to get that and get that done tomorrow. And I've also, I'm gonna run down to National Standard Parts and we're gonna get 5 16 stainless steel hardware. We'll get some bolts, washers, and lock nuts to bolt that thing on there. And then, um, I'm gonna take this with me to the house today and I wanna go ahead and test fit it and make sure that it works. It should, it should be no problems, but we'll go ahead and um, I'll show you what it looks like once we test fit it on there. All right, we made it back to the house. We've got the cargo carrier on the back of the Kodiak right there. And you can see our fitment right here is nice. I gave myself a couple extra inches back there behind the bumper. And I think it's gonna line up pretty good right there. So this is physically the same size as the one that I took off, which is this guy right here. This is the one that we've been running. It's actually just a little bit wider that way than the one that I made. So I'm gonna get the box out now and go ahead and set it on there and just see what it looks like for the first time. I do have a pin, so our pin lined up. And I did get some material from the welding shop. All you had in the drop rack was inch and a quarter. I was looking for inch and a quarter tubing, but I was hoping to get some inch and a half angle iron, but he, all we had was full sticks of that. So this was in the drop rack. So I went with that there. But my intentions was, basically it's gonna mimic the center of it. And we're gonna have a couple pieces that's gonna stretch across like that, just like that, and tie into some angle iron. And that's why I was looking for the bigger angle iron. So that inch and a quarter probably will not work, I'll probably have to go back and get another piece of, uh, see if I can find something a little bit bigger. I know he's got some two inch in there, but that's a little bit too big. But I'll figure that out. So anyway, let's get the box on there and uh, see what that looks like now. There you go. First look with the toolbox on the carrier. It looks good. It looks so much better than what I had on there. I've been really excited to get into this point and having this guy. 
looks nice. So it's not hindering the tail lights. That's gonna be the, the comment that people were making before I even got to this point, because I heard it before online about, can't block your tail lights. It's not gonna block the tail lights over on the side. Same size as what was on there before with those other boxes, no different than what we had. That is looking good. Obviously we're gonna paint the frame. We'll just do a rattle bomb paint job on that and get that cleaned up. So this is nearly complete. I'm gonna work on the tubing and the angle iron that's gonna help support side to side right here. We'll get some angle iron and weld underneath that and we'll have our tube that comes across and it'll just bolt in there, all right? The center, the way that I always mount that one in the middle is I have a, um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a tightening hitch pin. So it's almost like a bolt. And the other piece is in here. You have a nut and a spring inside there. And the pin itself is like a bolt. And when you thread it in there, it actually pulls the nut to the side on the inside of the tube and it locks that one in there. It makes it very rigid. And that's how I always held the other. Uh, that one was always held on there. So we'll do that with that as well. And then with the two supports on the side to kind of help give it that side to side movement right there, you know, that rocking that way, it's gonna be rock solid once we do that. I've got our inch and a quarter tubes cut, dressed on the ends. We're gonna be drilling our 11 30 seconds hole on the ends. And we're gonna have a piece of angle iron that's um, four inches long. It'll have a hole drilled in as well, where whenever these, whenever the hitch or the carrier is installed, there'll be a piece of angle iron that this is resting up against, and we'll simply put a 5 16 bolt through there to hold the ends. They are offset. They're not gonna be right in the center. I'm actually drilling at 11 30 seconds and then I decided we're going to go through here with a nine millimeter diameter drill bit kind of clean the hole up a little bit and open up just a little bit more we want just a little bit of a little extra clearance for lining up things like this whenever you go to install it and clean that hole up nice too piece of angle is four inches long the same width of my receiver tube and I've got it uh, actually two and a quarter inches from the end right there these are the pieces of angle iron that will get welded to the bottom of our hitch there we're going to put a 3 8 hole in both of these for their bolt to go through but I'm also going to use an end mill and we're going to slot this slightly back and forth just to allow for a little bit of misalignment up and down whenever we go to uh, bolt the thing on. I'll put these in place by actually clamping them to the, the square tubing and get it clamped up to the hitch with the bolt in there. So it should be lined up, but a little bit of oversized hole in the slot will just allow for any kind of misalignment there. These are just parallels that I've got slidden uh, through both sides there just to help prevent any uh, downward pressure. And I wanted these I wanted the center of this to be three eighths from the edge. These are these are offset. It's not in the middle. Three eighths will be the center point, but we'll slot it each way just a little ways. There we go, we got our slot. That should help that bolt line up really easily now. We've got our frame. This is bolted down upside down on the table. We're using some uh, two inch riser blocks there. 
got it clamped down nice and square on everything. Everything is measured exactly the same from tube to tube. So all three of these are perfectly square to each other. Should be lined up. And here's our angles that we just drilled and slotted. And these will be, they'll get bolted on just like so. These get welded on to the tube on the hitch. This is upside down, remember? And then we'll have a 5 16th bolt that's going to go through and bolt to that angle line right there. And that is, that's going to that's gonna provide our support on the out, outward side. So that's how we're going to do that. That's going to finish up all the welding on the carrier here, the cargo carrier. The welds turned out pretty good. But you know what the thing that I'm most excited about with this is not getting the job completed is I am just absolutely loving this Fireball Tools welding fixture table right here. Being able to take your clamps or any of the tooling that goes on this table and put it anywhere you want is just invaluable. I mean, even... Um, Yesterday, I had this thing stood up on the side so I could do some work with it standing up. And you can take this clamp and put it right here and hold it, pull it up against the table that way too. So the, the possibilities for setting up these tables for your work is absolutely endless. And the, and the tooling that, that Fireball provides uh, for this table here, there's a lot of options so that you can be as precision as you wanna be with your welding. So I just want to throw it out there. I'm really, really happy with this table. This serves me as a workbench and a welding fixture table whenever I'm going to be doing welding. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy unclamped. And I'm going to run down to the store, go ahead and get our hardware. We are just about finished up with this guy. I'm ready to uh, get this test fitted on the camper again and get these guys welded in place. All right, we made it back to the house so we can get this fitted on there. So here's our angle brackets and what they'll look like when they're bolted on. Just got them loosely, but you can see you've got a little bit of movement there for alignment. And we've got all of our stainless hardware here. We've got some shorter 5 16 bolts that will bolt in the toolbox there. I got flat washers, AN washers, and then uh, lock nuts. And this is all stainless steel there. Here's the other angle bracket right there. So what we got to do is get this fitted back on the hitch there and get this guy, get these clamped where they need to be. And then I'll have to, uh, I'm going to have to run my leads out here from my stick welder. I'm going to have to do some overhead welding, which I'm not excited about, but we'll, we'll get her done. I'll use a 7018 welding rod and get those welded on there. And then the other thing I wanted to point out, this was that center uh, pin that I was talking about that I use. Okay. So in place of your 5 8 lock pin this is more like a bolt then you have a slot there so you can put your cotter key on the outside for safety but it comes with a nut i've already got it stuck in there it comes with a square shaped nut so it doesn't spin in there and it's actually got a spring as well so it keeps it pushed over to the side so when you actually put this pin through there and tighten it up that nut that's on the inside gets pulled to the inside of the tube, which actually locks it in place. So I really, really like this setup right here, this locking pin, and I would recommend this for any insert that goes into your receiver hitch, whether it be a ball hitch or an accessory like this. This keeps the, keeps the, the thing from rocking around and shaking like you usually see everything do. So I just wanted to point that out, all right? on the ground again yep my favorite place <laughs> to be working on campers and vehicles on the ground so i'm going to get these angle angle pieces just tacked in place so i can move the clamp out of the way okay and um, i realized that after i clamped them on that i forgot to wire brush up the uh, paint so we're just going to use our 7018 and burn through them it'll weld it 
once I get it tacked, I'm going to take that wire brush and brush it real good and it'll be just fine. Not in the most comfortable position right here, no. but I think we can get it. Just want to get them tacked. And then we're going to do the same thing to the inside. Yep, will you hand me the chipping hammer and the wire brush I over sure there? I sure will. I already tacked that side and I forgot to bring them over here. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, that one's good. That one's good. There we go. All right, and while I'm down here, God, friggin' helmet. You go and try to look at it and you get smashed. All right. Oh, I yeah. might need to book us a massage after this. A massage would be fantastic. All right. Happy? Yeah, I think I better get me another tack on there because that one on the front is tacked, but it's not. Not, not to A-bomb standards. Not as strong as I wanted it to be. You want to learn how to weld? Do I? Do vertical welding. Lay on the ground and get underneath something and learn how to run a 7018. You'll know how to weld. You can weld anything then. <laughs> I think I'd like to start with something more simple. <laughs> yep. I'm going to try to get another tack here. Let me see if I can see it. Can't really see it, but I think I got it. Oh yeah, we got, got it. it right, yep, we got it Look. right there. How about I buy you dinner? I would absolutely love that. And a massage. But you, and, you pay for that. And a massage. <laughs> Look at the C-clamp all wrapped up. <laughs> I was just having a hard time seeing the, I got it on there good. I just, I was losing my place and I wanted to make sure I wasn't welding nothing there. So we'll get back right back on it. There we go. Let's go ahead and put a little bit right here too. Cover up that ugly tack weld there. Yeah, see, more good. Happy? Yep. Okay. Not bad considering these rods. I have no idea how old those rods are. But I think it's more like considering the position that you're in. Most people How think awkward. that you can't weld with an old welding rod, but these have not been in an oven and I've had those for at least 10 years, probably longer than that. Well, it's not going to win any awards, but I guarantee you, it ain't coming off. Again, really awkward position. Really is. Just getting the dust off of it so we can rattle bomb it later and keep it from turning orange. I don't know what rattle bomb means. Rattle bomb? You remember when Derek talks about a Craigslist rebuild on an engine? Yep. When he goes... We're gonna give it a little bit of the old and it's gonna be just like new. <laughs> <laughs>
got it. Nailed it. Yep. That one. That one did pretty good too. Strike the arc. I think so. One more right here. There we go. Happy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think. Happy that you're done. <laughs> yep, I am. Oh, you still, you still filming me? Kind of always. Always. I'm gonna put one right on that corner. You're almost done with this, babe. I am. I'll be glad to be done with this. I'm gonna put one more right on that corner. Right here. Clean that up right it and tie the two together very well. It is D-U-N. Yay! Minus some rattle bomb. Not bad. Here. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Done. Well, there's the carrier completely bolted into place. I'm really happy with the results. These outward supports out here on the end has really stiffened it up quite a bit. You're still gonna get a little bit of flex right here, but you see that's gonna really keep it from that side to side rock whenever we're just getting into it and getting things trying to move. That center bolt got it pulled in nice and tight. So like I said, you can see that right there. I'd recommend that pin for any accessory that you put into the two inch receiver there. I like it. So we'll get the box and set it on there and just see see what it's gonna look like one final time. I'm not gonna leave it hooked up because we need to pull this off and we'll do a rattle bomb paint job on it. And there she is. I really love the look of that. It just looks, it looks more professional that way with the aluminum diamond plate toolbox. That is gonna be really nice. Such a nice upgrade, something I've been, kind of putting off for a while. I wanted to make sure it stuck back far enough that I could still kind of comfortably get in here and use this um, this hitch right here. This is a riser. So if we want to carry our bicycles or my ladder or something, it's a separate thing that I put on there. But man, what a difference it makes. Really is going to be such a nice addition to the Kodiak here. I don't have it bolted down yet, but we'll open it up. And we've got our four holes drilled in there. And they are lining up just like they should. So I know that it's going to bolt down with no problem there. We'll do that later. A lot of room in here that we can put our things. Um, this will work also while we're out camping. If I need to put things away because rain's coming or it's going to storm, this is going to give me some good uh, storage area, temporary storage area when we're at the camp too. So we can take things like chairs or whatever and uh, set them down in here to kind of get them out of the weather and then close it up. The rain's going to stay out of it. You can lock it, lock it in place. Really is going to be sweet. I'm excited about having this for all of our future trips. As I said, we're going to paint it. That'll be like the last thing that we're going to do. But uh, I'm going to pull it off here because the Kodiak is getting ready to go down to Carpenters. They're going to help me get the, um, the second solar panel installed, get all that wired up. We're going to get our lithium battery installed, a new converter that's uh, going to be compatible for lithium batteries. That's all going to be taking place next week. I wanted to get this done so that I can be painting it while the Kodiak is gone. I wanted to make sure it was going to fit up, and I think we've proven that. So that is going to wrap up this project right here. 
I'm really happy with it and I hope you guys had fun watching me build this and get it installed. I think it's gonna be a really nice upgrade for our Kodiak and I'm gonna enjoy having this on all of our travels. Here's our new A-Bomb barbecue camp box. It's beautiful. Check that out. It looks so good. I really, really like the way that this turned out. It looks so much better yes. and it's gonna be so much more convenient yes. than the old system that I was using with the plastic bins and the bag. Yes. So real happy with the outcome. Abby did a fantastic job painting the frame there. Thanks, babe. Thank you for the help with that, babe. Mm -hmm. She's been wanting to spray paint something forever. So I'm like, here you go. Abby has been wanting to spray paint something. So I've got a great project for her to spray paint. I'm nailing this. This is our new cargo carrier that I built for the, for the Kodiak. I wanted it to be pink. Of course you wanted it to be pink. They have so many cool colors like Sparkle, and glitter, and pink. No, no we got to. We'll have to find another project for that. This needs to be black so it'll match good. All right. So I gave her a, just a crash course on uh, how to. It's a little easier to see this side. Oh yeah. You're doing good though. Okay. Just get your first. See how close you were. A little. You just do your thing. I don't want to mess you up. Okay. This isn't a big deal. It's just a. It's just a big dumb frame that. Well, I'm sure hang on the camper. there are ways to do this, but for my first time, I feel like I'm doing okay. You're doing good. As long as you paint it good, minimal curtains. See, there's your, see, there's your curtain right there. Look at that. You gonna do better? <laughs> wow. We'll fix that. I'm never gonna do this again <laughs> for you. You getting a little bit better technique? Yeah. It's I didn't listen to you at first because I can't. <laughs> she didn't want to take any of my paint advice. I just I said, you go for it. You do your thing. As long as you get some paint on there, that's all that matters. We just want to keep it from turning orange. Oh, there's going to be paint on there if I'm doing it. <laughs> it's a lot easier to see now. Yep, got it out here in the light. I was just trying to, the leaves have been falling and stuff's been blowing around. I think you're doing a fine job. Been, it would have been better with glitter. It Paint wasn't that. glittery, but I'll take it. Next thing's gonna be glittery. We do have some. More pink. Um, we do have some reflective tape that I'm gonna uh, stick on there. Yes. But we literally just painted it yesterday, so I wanted to give that another day or two to dry. So we're gonna have some reflective strips down here, just to kind of help. But uh, keep in mind, though, this is not blocking the view of the tail lights. Correct. Um, you get people that mention that and comments because they're unaware they just they just see this big dumb box and they think it's going to block the back of the camper but anyway this is finished and i just finished putting all of our stuff in here so one of the things i wanted to mention was that we actually reduced weight slightly because every trip we're gone and abby can contest to this we keep downsizing yes we do and taking things out that we're not necessarily using or needing you know when you when you start packing your camper up usually you, you have all these things you throw in there because yeah i want to use this or i might I think use I might, that yeah so i've been taking some of the stuff out that i know that i really haven't been using or i really don't need to so instead of having certain things that we had before, we're just not going to worry about it. We're not yes. going to have those things anymore, like cast iron skillets. Those are not going to be in here. So I'm going to show you what we got. Show them. Show yep. them. I'm going to show you what we got in the camp box here. But I love being able to come up. We got a key so that we can lock it up. Yeah. It'll keep the water out of it. Ooh. Nice and organized. I hope that I can keep it this way. But when you first pack it in there, it always looks good. As long as I'm so, not touching it, it'll stay clean. So first off, you can see, we don't have a thousand pounds back here, you know? So we picked up these plastic bins from Lowe's because they fit in there perfectly. This yes, is 24 do. inch by 24 inch by 60 inch, by the way. So this one is gonna have all of our utensils in there, you know, tongs, wire brushes, lid lifters. We got our skewers, things like that is in this bin. This one, we're gonna have our aluminum pan. So this is, so like this aluminum pan right here, we get these off Amazon. These fit 
in the little hasty bait grill that we're going to be taking this Perfectly. year. They also fit in the little pit barrel junior. Yes. So these work really good. Like if we're going to do a smoked shrimp or anything, we're, we need a pan. we're just going to use these guys. So we got a couple of those. I have the eight by eight down there in the bottom. We have our gloves, our throwaway gloves. These are hooks for the pit barrel cleaning supplies. So it's all light stuff. Yeah. Over here, we have our fire starters. These are the Kingsford brand, by the way. I get these off Amazon. They work really well. And uh, some more cleaning supplies, some random things. We got our lanterns. And then over here on the side, this is our smoke wood, extra propane bottle. We have the grill gun in here. And then I have a box of uh, the pig wipes in here, some rags that I'm going to yeah. start keeping those in there so that I have extra wipes. And you did use the pig mat in the bottom. Oh, yeah. All the... Yeah. So here's the roll of pig mat right here. Yeah. So I use this stuff for all kinds of things. It ain't just, I don't use it just for absorbing water or oil. Yeah. You can use it as padding, you know, all sorts of things. So I took this and it fit perfectly in the bottom of yeah. the box down there. So I put a layer in the bottom and then inside the plastic bins, there's one layer down in there as well. Well, I mean, we did have a, a time where the little thing what it was left unzipped when we went away and it got water all in it and yeah. that caused a lot of a mess That's, that happened several times though yes, because this, you know that'll be avoided with this which yeah is exactly so we do a lot of barbecue at camps and there's been many times where you know we're inside and we have a rain shower come up or a storm and then i forgot that the the bag is sitting there open yeah. so it just collected in the bottom of the bag and yeah. then everything got wet so now eliminate that as long as we don't leave this up right. but i mean look at this right here look how nice this is nice Latch. and then lock it up and we are good to go. You did good on this. I'm Thanks, very babe. proud. This is this is what I've been dreaming of doing ever since I first built that hitch yeah, for the yeah, back yeah. of our Kodiak. Yeah. This is what I wanted. But to get started, yeah. I bought that guy. And then those action packer bins fit in there perfect. And this is the major upgrade that I've been kind of procrastinating on doing. Well, it's done now and it looks amazing. So, and also, like, look how good our stickers look now. Like, the yep. back is so much more open for... So, because the spare tire is gone. That was right here. The yes. spare tire is underneath the camper yeah. on the front side of the axles. Yep. So now we have this opened up. We don't have the ugly spare tire back here. Yeah. And I seriously think that what I have in here is less than yes. what I had on here before you with did. that system. Even you though did. that was plastic, yeah. I, I had some cast iron in here that I'd taken out. So the, the Dutch ovens and the, the camp ovens that we use, I keep those in the back of the truck whenever we travel. Yeah. So my goal was not to weigh this thing down with a bunch of heavy weight. All this is, is for our cooking supplies. You yeah. know, this is all lightweight stuff right but here. But this, this kind of stuff really does take up a lot of room. It so does. the fact that it's, it's back here and it's yep. organized, yep. It, you can find everything easily, you're gonna love it. This. It works really good. Yeah. We've had people say, well, why don't just put it in the pass-through storage? Well, the pass-through storage has our tables, yeah. our camp chairs, my camp stove, the grill, my toolbox, yeah, and, and then the chart, the, uh, the power cable. I mean, I think we've gotten into the habit of not having to unpack everything to get to one thing yeah especially yep. if it's like a overnight you know like an overnight stay or whatever we yep. may not pull out all the tables and everything and so you don't want to have to unpack everything to reach one thing yeah so, exactly but this uh and, eliminates and, that and, and i still have a little bit of room in here to add to if i need to like if Maybe we buy shop and buy something. That's is that what you mean? <laughs> we need to okay. put some things away. Maybe we go to Walmart in between our stops. Sure. And we have dry goods and we can just throw them in here. Yeah, you know paper I mean? towels and things yeah. like that. Yeah, agreed. Yep. Well, this looks so, really great. I'm I'm very proud. So I'm thanks, babe. I'm I'm really happy about this. Yeah, and it, looks so it good. is it is nice and rigid because we have the three point uh, mounting system on there. So, yeah. I mean, what you see here, that's it. That's just the material flexing right yeah. there. But yeah. I mean, that's nice Which and rigid. Which supposed to do. It looks so, great. This is this is ready to go. Yeah. We are almost ready for the big haul. Yes, we are. Yep, it's coming up this week, so we're getting all of our our final things done. Yes. Um, I have another. We'll have another some kind of video on the custom mount that I made for our Starlink antenna. Yes. I, ma I made my own custom mount that's going to put the Starlink antenna up above the Kodiak, and it's going to be mounted on the front of the Kodiak there. And we also have a cool project that we're doing inside the camper. We're going to show that as well, yep. so yep. that will be coming as well. So We'll, we'll probably be showing that when we're on Big Hall because we're kind of running out of time yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. Abby has a lot of work to do. I'm trying to get some of my machine work done and videos edited. So we'll we'll get to some of the stuff as we get on the road yes. and we have more time to 
you know, get the camera out and say, okay, let's finally show this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well but, done, babe. That's a huge one checked off. Yep. Thank you. Um, real happy with this, yeah. you know, and, and the big hall will, will give you some follow-ups on yep. how well I'm liking the new, the new barbecue box. Yep. <laughs> All Love right. it, babe. We'll see you guys later.